Alright, time for another DraftPhysics.com video presentation. So I'm just going to do a response video to part of a physics physicist Michael video. And um, it would probably be no reply because nobody can have a real conversation about the state of evidence in the science of physics and whether they should state things as facts when they really haven't demonstrated them to be secure facts. <laughs> yeah. And such. So a very quiet intro. Hi everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Eh, ah, you know. I'm on Earth, frankly. Can't do well on Earth. If you have a brain, you, there's going to be all kinds of things that are going to bug you. <laughs> yeah. You're going to notice it ain't working right. <sighs> what I want to do in this video is go through some resources that can be very helpful for anyone who wants to try doing some science experiments. Right, so why should we have to try? You know, they all should be already done. I mean, we got people telling us that, uh, you know, momentum isn't conserved, that, they, you know, they've proven it with, you know, a wooden Newton's cradle, essentially. Now, they don't make these out of wood. Even steel, you know, eh. <laughs> you know, it doesn't last too long. Um, you know, it, shouldn't the experiments be done precisely and completely and accurately? And especially when you have zillions of dollars, frankly, physics has a lot of money. I mean, they have all kinds of very complex equipment and stuff. And just the amount of money they pissed away on quantum computing are attempting to find a neutrino. I mean, if you took one fraction of that money, those resources, and just did these, you know, prove that it takes five times the fuel to go five times, 25 times the fuel to go five times faster. Or that if something's going 25 times faster, it does 25 times the work on the environment. There is actually 25 times the joules in uh, its motion. I mean, they haven't proven any of this stuff. For themselves, which is something that I would so again, doing them for ourselves, I mean, it has so many liabilities. Glue it together, slop it together, messy, sloppy, ugly. And besides the fact that, you know, some of these experiments, you have to really be aware of all these external variables that are going to get in the way. You know, like banging a piece of steel into a piece of wood. Uh, is that a good transfer device for a piece of wood? Strongly recommend for anyone who has an interest in science. Yeah, if you have an interest in science, what should be really bugging you is that they haven't done any of these elemental experiments to one way or the other decisively prove what they claim to exist. So I can again bring up Einstein's theory, okay, that light is bent twice as much by gravity. And all they have are kind of... Uh, circumstantially um, weak pieces of evidence, uh, sort of indirect pieces of evidence. And the one direct experiment that uh, they claim they did do in 1919, frankly, they've never successfully repeated. <laughs> and um, they have 400 times better resolution from space. I mean, I can say this over 100 times now, maybe 200 times, and there's nobody will reply. I mean, can't one of you science defenders just reply and explain how, yeah, well, you know, scientists are busy or something? I mean, what's the excuse? 400 times better resolution. You can use Jupiter to do the experiment. You know, a nice quiet place, relatively speaking. A lot quieter in, in around Jupiter than it is around the sun. <laughs> I've talked in previous videos about... Yes, you've talked and talked, and you talk in a little strange rhetoric that doesn't really get to the point that the proof should be complete. It shouldn't be incomplete. It shouldn't be, oh, this experiment sort of says, but this experiment says something different, and this one says something entirely different. No, it shouldn't be a mess. The proof should be clear. It's a trial. We're all jurors trying to figure out whether the guy did it or not, okay? And you're saying, he did, he did, he did it. And every piece of evidence you show me is, you know, just the drawing of a gun. You don't have a real gun. You didn't do any ballistics test. And if you did a ballistics test, okay, you'd find out that 
you lose 99.94% of the kinetic energy and perfectly conserve the momentum. Surprise, surprise. And how can that make sense? You did 900, you didn't, you did a, an extraordinarily high amount of kinetic energy did work somewhere, and yet it didn't require the use of any momentum at all. How is that sentence supposed to make sense? How science is based on proposing and testing a model. Right, and it's, but so where's the evidence that you're doing any of this science stuff? Testing with what? Again, a, a strangled experiment. Some some experiment with 17 mirrors and you know 43 magic boxes that detect this and do that and distort this. I mean, it's all boxes and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors. Of nature, and that when a model or claim is presented, the only thing that increases our confidence that the model is correct. Okay, so, you know, this is where it gets a little tricky because there's lots of things that can increase confidence. Okay, the fact that there isn't an alternative explanation is a really good one. Um, and, you know, the, the deduction thing where, you know, you can confirm it from different points, different places. So, like, the theory of evolution is confirmed not only by biology and DNA and lots of stuff. It's also confirmed by geology and, you know, even space. Whether or not it accurately predicts the outcomes of physical observations and experiments. Right, and the accurate prediction part, again, the evidence should be more complete than um, experiments that may have variables in them that weren't accounted for. Um, it should be solid proof. And it should go to the real questions. The point is, is if one half mv squared is the correct answer to how energy works in this universe, then you should be able to produce the 36 times the fuel to go six times faster. In science, there are no authorities that declare from on high. Okay, so this is just so silly when that's all we have is a bunch of authorities pronouncing the truth. And they disagree about tiny little things. Copenhagen versus uh, whatever it's called. Boing. Boing. <laughs> um, or, um, <clears throat> you know, multiverses times many verses times kind of a lot of verses times 11 dimension verses or some other kind of crap string theory I mean there's little tiny places where you have a little tiny bit of debate but uh, any of the essential physics no you all you say from on high that light is bent twice as much by gravity but you can't show me a decent picture of it what is you, you say you saw a black hole by you know, taking six months worth of data from 17 million different satellites and uh, stitching it all together and say, look, it's a picture. True about the natural world. Ah, uh, you know, you got the, the, the stupid, the whatever, gravity waves. Something Einstein said ain't going to happen. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just going to be a tiny effect. It ain't going to be able to travel zillions of light years or any light years. Um, and, uh, you know, and so you just make up a new theory that somehow you can convert matter into bent space. I mean, it's not a push force, you know, it's some sort of pull force that travels the speed of light just like light, and somehow you converted matter into pull force. Sure you did. It is observations and experiments that determine what we tentatively accept as accurate and there's nothing tentative so again that's another fake and phony word you have no right to say the word tentative because there's nothing tentative in the description they say professor lewin will say nail in the coffin evidence the two slit experiment when he's you know when he's demonstrating a one slit experiment which is the irony you know he's showing a one slit pattern describing a one slit pattern and says look nail in the coffin evidence that two slits create a wave function blah 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 no Sorry, no sale. And it is observations and experiments that we use to demonstrate when a model fails? Yeah, it doesn't matter if you demonstrate that it fails. So, um, you know, I could just bring up examples. Electric Boom challenged Professor Lewin on his two voltages in the same location theory. 
and sort of just explained, well, your probe wires are screwing up the experiment. You can't measure the voltages from two different locations, okay, and expect to get the same voltage because your inducer is going to induce different voltages in your probes. And uh, did Electric Boom win? No, because the authority had to be right. And, you know, that's the bullshit here. And it must be discarded. So, while well, science does have experts... Uh, yeah, are they? <laughs> Who declared them so? Was there an election somewhere? I didn't get to vote. Um, where did we find... How did we decide who is the expert? And what did they have to believe to even get into expert school? Or to get their doctorate? Or to do any of this stuff? Well, they obviously had to preach the same sermons the bishops are preaching. It's not... This isn't a democracy... Um, this isn't tested. We don't, there, there's no TV show that puts the, the ideas on the screen and says, well, here's this wacky multiverse crap, and here's this, you know, photons uh, have ESP theory, uh, <laughs> you know, and then have some Newtonian counter argument that now it's just bumping particles and, you know, we just can't see the little stuff well enough. No, none of this was tested by having to be rational. <laughs> Sorry, that didn't happen. People who spent a lot of time and effort in setting up those experiments, making those... So this is the big lie, right? We don't have these experiments. So we have to go to the internet and go searching around for indirect evidence. So the Mythbusters did crash some cars, not trying to discover whether momentum or kinetic energy was in control, but, you know, that's the outcome of the experiment. It demonstrates that, well, there's no sign of this kinetic energy thing, okay? When, I, when we do the, let's accelerate things to twice the speed, see, we, see, there's no four times the damage. It doesn't show up. It certainly doesn't show up in any crash analysis. So if I went to crash analysis school, they're going to tell me that, you know, it's momentum in, momentum out. They're not going to tell me it's kinetic energy in, kinetic energy out. So how do you deal with that fact that th those institutions aren't even teaching the physics that you declare to be beyond reasonable doubt proven? So observations, analyzing the data, and applying those scientific methods. To so what the only scientific method I see is slander. I mean, your the scientific method is per second, per second. Why would I say that? Why would I say per second more than one time? <laughs> I don't need to say it more than one time. It already is a given that, well, yes, it could be five seconds worth. It could be 25 seconds worth. And why would I n n notate per, sec per second by squaring the seconds? That's not per second per second. A square does not notate any number of seconds. It's a very specific number of seconds. So it's all bullshit. Talk, talk, talk. Rhetoric, rhetoric, rhetoric word salad garbage reach the most accurate current conclusions <clears throat> so again no i'm sorry these aren't accurate conclusions again how you know it's they're telling you that a photon is this wavy thing in the fields magnetism going like this and electricity going like this except the magnetism is you know thousands of times weaker <laughs> you know it's all mush silly crap those currently accepted positions are still ultimately based on the data. Okay, they aren't based on data, so that's just not true. The evidence doesn't exist, so you can keep saying it, but it just isn't true. Where's your picture, okay, of something being twice as bent by gravity? Anything being twice as bent. So, for anyone interested in science, Learning a bit about how to actually do an experiment and analyze that data is critical. Well, it certainly helps to have some familiarity, but what, what doing experiments makes obvious to you is, oh, shit, there's an awful lot of variables, aren't there? I mean, even a simple lever. I can't make an ideal lever. All I can make is unideal levers. And so I have to compensate for the fact that I can't make an ideal one. And I can buy expensive you know fancy equipment made to do demonstrations and yeah it's made to do the demonstrations they don't you know <laughs> it's it's not made to do experiments it's made to have an outcome 
Uh, you know, that's the design feature. You know, I could point out to physicist Michael, you know, he did these experiments where he bumped a spring, let a spring push two things apart. Maybe he should just turn the cars around, use the magnetic end, you know, and have them repel each other. So smash them together and let the repulsion pull them apart. See if it's the outcome is the same, that he can make multiple different kinds of momentum out of the same magnetic compression. And the, the best, best way to learn is by doing it. Uh, so that's a nice little phrase, but you know, I don't know if it is the best way to learn, frankly. Because so much of it is invisible. So much of what's controlling things is some invisible function, okay, that doing isn't necessarily going to make you understand what's going on so I guess you could be a doctor but you really need to understand what bacteria is and this and that and yeah it's more complicated than just saying does he have a fever or not in the videos that I posted on this channel I've talked about a bunch of different physical principles but you shouldn't believe me right and so you say I shouldn't believe you but then you say you're you're you've proven it so, you know, there's just a duplicity in, in your words. Because if anybody criticizes your experiment as having outcomes that are inconsistent, you know, where they could argue that, well, something must have gone wrong because a spring is an amount of energy and you can't make it produce more and less of this thing called momentum anyway. So, you didn't conserve the momentum and that's a problem. You say it's not a problem, but yeah, it's a problem. Because I would argue that I can keep throwing phrases at you, like Professor Lewin, who would argue that if something is going to be conserved in the universe, it's going to be momentum first. First, you always got to conserve the momentum. Kinetic energy, okay. He says, you know, <laughs> nature can deal with that one way or the other, but it can't finagle momentum. You should just believe me. So, okay, you say it, but you don't say it, okay? You're saying your rickety little experiments prove. And I don't need to see, uh, <clears throat> you know, it taking 36 times the fuel to go six times as fast. I don't need to see that because you've done some other experiment that already proves it beyond a reasonable doubt. And I'm just saying, oh, bullshit, come on. I want the better experiment. I want the real proof. I want a proof that goes a little deeper. Anything on authority because authorities can be wrong. Well, you don't think so. So again, I just call that more duplicity. Okay, because you consider anything that disagrees with your theories to be some sort of flat Earth, uh, you know, nonsense that you don't have to pay any attention to. So as soon as somebody critiques any of this science, they get called an anti-science or a science denier or some other kind of crap. In my scientific critical thinking and testing physics. Right, and this isn't, you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't see anything critical in the thinking you're applying. I see every indication that you're just trying to propagandize for the conventional of a, a theory. That all you're trying to do is contrive, okay, experiments that indicate, okay, that that's the right theory. But they're not very deep, and again, they're not experiments that can be picked at, you know, in the sense that you did them, not me. <laughs> you know, I didn't get to do the experiment. Um, I didn't get to fiddle with it and see if I could make it come out some other way by just changing, you know, what it banged into. I mean, there's lots of different ways you can do these experiments. I mean, this whole idea that twice the energy goes into a rubber ball, hits a wall, and you're saying twice the energy went into the wall. I mean, that should be provable. You know, I mean, I just make the wall so it can move, and as soon as the wall moves, I get less rebound from the ball. You know, and I'm going to be putting motion into the wall, obvious energy into the wall. Am I really going to get twice the energy in the wall plus the rebound of the ball? I don't think so. Try to demonstrate some of the methods involved in how to set up actual experiments, take real data, and then analyze that. So, so again, he thinks it's all this data thing is just a, a, you know about having to you know com be completely dependent on a bunch of electronics and other sources of data. And, um, you know, don't do much to confirm that you're getting it right. 
that data to test scientific claims. And I hope I've done that in a reasonably convincing way. No, you haven't. It's not critical at all. You're not really testing it. You're not doing it different ways. You, you stop doing the lever experiment because, you know, I mean, the logic was already, we were already demonstrating that, oh, yeah, you got to account for the motion in the lever. So that's a loss of momentum or force. And so if you're going to put some object on the lever, you have to account for the fact that it's less force than you thought it would be because it's not an ideal lever. All of that crap. And you didn't pay any attention to any of that. And then you, 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 you did something that was so, so silly and sloppy, uh, you know, using a piece of clay, <laughs> you know, something that obviously is going to absorb the momentum um, in a momentum transfer experiment. I mean, how could that possibly have any reasonableness? Because again, the conclusions that we reach about any claim should be based on actual data. No, they, they should be based on good experimental evidence, however you want to describe that. Okay, you want to keep saying data, you, you're you know somehow interested in this word um that's your business but the point is the experiments demonstrate they have they have conditions and an outcome and that's all you really care about all these steps in setting up an experiment making observations doing the analysis all these can be quite complicated there you go and the that's the part you don't want to hear about so, you know, I'll say you haven't repeated the Eddington experiment. You'll say, oh, we did this other satellite experiment. Same thing. When not even close to the same thing. I mean, it's a completely different experiment measuring completely different wavelengths of light, kind of doing a completely different thing. And you're going to claim that experiment proves it when, no, you can point out the obvious that there's no way in that experiment to tell the difference between photons that were scattered by particles and photons that were actually bent by gravity. Those are facts and you're just you're just going to assert that no, it's the same experiment. Uh, it's just as good. Uh, those are the kind of arguments you're going to make and those arguments are fallacious. They're garbage. So there's no better way to learn these methods than by trying it yourself. Oh, brother. So, no, seeing is believing. You don't have to try anything, okay? So, you know, I just want to see it done. I don't want to, you know, go out and, uh, you know, five-ton train, ten-ton train. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the fact is this doesn't sound like too complicated an experiment, you know, just to have a, a cart that has the, the five mass going twice the speed and the... 10 masks going half the speed. That one seems like a really easy experiment to create. And you just tie a string between them and see when the string runs out, who wins the tug of war. The fact that they haven't even done that experiment. I mean, it's so simple. Not done. Uh, <coughs> The Ian Gosling character, you know, he's he in his latest video, he's referencing a video where he didn't, you know, he made pendulums out of solid objects, okay, and then put the weights on the bottom of the pendulums. So he's not accounting for the weight of the rods he's using to support the pendulums. And so he's thinking he's doing a 2 to 1 comparison when he's really doing a 2.5 to 3.1 uh, you know, comparison. A 1.5 to 2.5 comparison. Unfortunately, one of the challenges is that experiments require accurate measurement tools. And All right, so that's you know, yes, of course, um, but I'd I'd say what's more important is um, stuff like an air track. You know, and having it uh, perfectly balanced and having the carts the right weight so they don't wobble and all of that stuff because you can see it, you know, in a lot of cases. So the experiment just has to produce something visual. So you could argue that you don't need something fancy to do the Eddington experiment from space, right? You just need a camera with a just a mediocre lens, a 12-inch something or other, um, you know, and it's good enough because you have such a visual advantage. Now, obviously, the better the technology you apply, uh, the better, the more obvious the results will be, the more certain they will be.
but they haven't tried anything. Zero. Zero. I'm supposed to, you're telling me it's a credible argument you can make in defense of your physics that it's never even occurred to any scientist controlling any satellite with photographic equipment to attempt the Eddington experiment. It's never even occurred to them. And they didn't even, they, they haven't even occurred to them to even try um, Einstein's idea of using Jupiter. Because, uh, frankly, with the 400 times better resolution, it's in the ball game. And they never even tried it. And I'm supposed to think that's credible science. That's science who wants to find the truth. I don't think so. And these can get pretty expensive in a lot of cases. We definitely can't all get space-based telescopes or massive particle accelerators to do these kinds of experiments in our backyard. And the point is, is why aren't the people who do have these equipment and do have these resources and do control this stuff, why haven't they even heard the inkling that they should be interested in doing these experiments? Why do all these people who are interested in seeing these experiments that would love to see the 10-ton train in a battle against the 5-ton train, uh, how come that interest doesn't exist in any of these people controlling the resources? I mean, obviously not one of them. I mean, it's not even a murmur in NASA. Well, you know, maybe we should explain to people that, uh, you know, uh, kinetic energy doesn't work in space. It doesn't even occur to them to tell the truth. You know, that they don't have any evidence of kinetic energy when it comes to moving things in space. It's all a momentum equation. I mean, it's just, you're incredible, okay? Your defense of the science is incredible. It's not a credible statement. There's, you can't defend the science as being good science. It's really awful, horrible, terrible science. All the way from the invention of your Leibnizian perspective. You don't even have the integrity to call yourself a Leibnizian. You're not a Newtonian, okay? I don't know what... You're an, a Leibnizian. It's Leibnizian mechanics. Why do you keep trying to force it to be somebody else's? It's not Galileo. It's not Descartes. It's not Newton. It's something different, and you won't even admit that. But there are actually a lot of either free or fairly low-cost resources that are pretty widely available. And it's these resources. Okay, so I'm not going to bother going through all this crap. This is, you know, little silly apps with your smartphone. Um, uh, obviously, you can do things with even speakers, you know, and, and sound recordings. You can, if you can make an experiment, make sounds. I mean, Galileo did it. Uh, he put bells, you know, so he could use sound to see what he couldn't see. He could hear, but he couldn't see it. So if he made it something he could hear, he could understand what was happening. So, yeah, that goes way back. Um, and frankly, none of these um, sensors that are in a smartphone are of much use besides uh, the ones that are capable of doing high frame rate photography or something. And obviously, I don't have one of those. Uh, and uh, the rest of it isn't all that sensitive. So, you know, the, the, the capacity of the smartphone to become a science instrument isn't all that. It's less than all that. All right, so that's what the rest of the video is. It's just about some in, in app you can install and somehow, we, you know, I, the, the, the funny thing is, is you know, I, I, <laughs> I have an app running, um, you know, some Chinese app, and it's really annoying because they, they stop the function and uh, you have to keep hitting the mouse every, you know, whatever, seven minutes to keep the thing running. And I just wanted an app that did a fake mouse click. And you can't even find one that works on, you know, a 5.0 tablet. You know, it's only the modern ones. And you can't buy a mouse where you can just, <coughs> you know, a simple mouse anyway, where just have a button that just said, yes, right click every five seconds or every 10 or every 10 minutes. I mean, it's just funny that there's so few, like even tying a mouse to uh, an instrument, there should be apps where... You know, you can just run the app and it will give you a trace of where the mouse goes, you know. You know, take all this hardware off and just get to the sensor itself, the very light sensor, and move it around. 
a tracing program even. And no, there's nothing. There's so few there's so few tools that integrate with a computer. I mean, there should be a ton of them that are just plug and play. You just plug, plug in the USB and it does the thing. I had an old exercise program 15 years ago. It had to be at least 15 years ago. And you just put a couple of sensors on an exercise bike and it ran, uh, you know, whatever, sled boards or bicycles or whatever, you know, some kind of race. And it was, you know, really quite brilliant. You know, and it plugged into the old serial port. I mean, it's just amazing how unadvanced the technology has become. It's just become small. It hasn't become at all uh, human uh, interactive. It's still just as hard to talk to my computer as it was 15 years ago. All right, anyway. Enough said. So, uh... Yeah, so that's enough of a video, just a commentary on the state of science and this propaganda. And the fact is, is the evidence does suck. There's a ton of experiments that need to be done to figure out this elemental stuff, wave particle, kinetic energy versus momentum. This is all way undiscovered territory. This is way underdone. And the fact that there's so few people that will even acknowledge the fact that the evidence pool is dry... Um, is pathetic that, the, the, that these fakers, these fake science lovers, can't even admit that they would want more evidence, that the evidence is insufficient, that before you start telling me photons have ESP, you really should have a better experiment than one that has 43 mirrors and 17 mystery boxes. All right, so till the next time and such so forth and whatnot. But uh, I just hate it here on this planet. <laughs> Earth. Ugh.